Good morning, everybody. I'm coming to you live. Well, not live for you guys, it's recording, but live for me. So just getting ready to paint here, and I just wanted to show you how to prepare. If you have not painted at home before, so you don't forget to set anything up when you're ready to do it, um, obviously your paints, your brushes. Um, if your paints aren't wet, go ahead and wet them little by little here. You know, just get some water on each one. And then um, make sure you have your brushes over here by your side so you can pick which one you want. Um, make sure you have a pencil, eraser, pencil sharpener nearby. Um, the photo that we're going to be using, which I will be texting you. Sorry, this reflection in the iPad. I'm using the iPad for my photo this time because of the fact that um, I have not gone anywhere to have prints made because I'm not leaving my home like most of you. Um, painting, which we'll talk about later. Um, mouse and mouse pad. Well, actually, we don't. You don't need that, but I need to turn on my computer on and off. And paper towels if you need them. Coffee, very important if you're painting in the morning. Just don't dip your brushes into your coffee by mistake. You'll probably see me do that once or twice while I'm doing these videos. But anyway, hopefully not. So that's it. And I'll be sending a video when I start painting. Step by step, we'll go from there. Good morning. I'm coming to you from my living room entryway where the light is good. And I wanted to be in my studio today, but the lighting is not great up there. And I don't have any way to set my computer up to be over my shoulder while I paint. Anyway, here's the um, photo that we're going to be using today. And you notice I have it on the iPad because I don't have prints made. So I don't want to go to any store to pick up prints. So um, I liked this. I took this picture back last summer in Ephraim, Wisconsin, in Door County. Um, and it's over Eagle Harbor. This is Peninsula State Park right here, the tree line. So I love the position of the flag. I loved the tree. Um, and I loved the sun and the colors of the sky. So I just thought it'd be a fun one to paint. And there's some people in there too, which you can opt to not put in if you don't want to. But anyway, that's what we're going to be using today. And I will send you this photo in your email where you can also get the link to this video. So I will also be taking step-by-step -step pictures, still pictures along the way. And I'll send those to you as well. So you'll have those to look at. And we'll see how all this works together. Hopefully you'll be able to create a nice painting um, at the end of this whole um, session. So let's start. I'm going to start with wet on wet for the sky. This whole part is going to be wet just down to the horizon line. Um, you can see that I've done the drawing already. Hopefully you can see this okay. There's the flagpole here. I just put in the basics, just the flagpole. I didn't even put the flag in yet. And then there's the trunk of the tree. There's the, this is the state park island right here. There's a little island out here and the shoreline right here. So all that is just penciled in. I've also put mask on. Um, if you look at this, there's a little moon there as well as the sun. So it's kind of a cool picture with both of those in place. So I've put a little spot of mask for the moon and some mask for the sun and the reflection in the water. So you can start by getting those things ready first. Now we're going to go wet on wet, and with wet on wet, you want to make sure that you get the entire sky very, very wet, glossy wet. It needs to be glossy wet. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Very, very wet. Keep it, keep it wet. So that when you put your paint on, it still has that glossiness and that wetness to it. You're not going to have it dry on you. Because if it starts to dry, you know what's going to happen. You're going to get things you don't want in there. I'm going over the flagpole, over the tree trunk, over the um, state park tree line there, right over the sun, right over everything that I've drawn in. I'm going to start taking and putting in this yellow around the sun first. So take your bright yellow, not your lemon yellow, as some of you would like, and 
put that in and just kind of let it float. Look at that. And then take some orange, or if you don't have an orange, make it with red and yellow. Put some orange in. Even a little bit more red if you want. That will fat so the ribbon dry. A little bit of red. Ooh, that's looking a little orangey down there. See that? <clears throat> Okay, now we're going to go with the blues in the sky in the top. Hopefully you can see all that. I'm just going to let it go. Don't play with it. Because you, the thing with one and one is you want the colors to work with the paper and with the water. So I'm going to take some ultramarine blue. Go around the top. Now the yellow's already started going into my paper. I'm not thrilled about that yellow. used a card table before. Prussian blue, a little Prussian blue. Prussian blue is a little bit greener, but that's okay. This kind of got stuck down there. A little bit more ultramarine. Not that the purple really is that stuck down there. I'm just going to swirl it around. Let it, let it mix in with your yellow. It's going to be cool. Whatever you do here will be neat. If you want to add a little bit of opera, make a little bit of purple there, you can sure do that. Put a little bit towards the sun, maybe a little bit up in the corner here. So that, my friends, is my first step. Hopefully, you'll have something that looks similar. They're all going to look different, so don't expect it to look perfect. It won't. Um, I'm seeing that the orange kind of went into the area around the sun. I want it to be more yellow. So I'm going to take a paper towel and try to get some of that out. If it doesn't work the first time, I'll have it um, work the second time around. So just dab it. See? Look at that comes right out. And it will probably start to float into there again, but you can just kind of keep dabbing it, and we can go back in with the yellow later after it dries. Remember to let things dry before you go back into them. Very important. Don't, don't get impatient. I'm not going to be using a hair dryer today because for one thing it would be very annoying to hear a hair dryer on a video. Also, you'll get much truer color if you don't dry it with a hair dryer, and we do have the time to wait for it, so there's no rush. No reason. Hello. So I wanted to show you something before we start on the next step of the picture, and that is a painting some of you might have done last year. It was the same kind of the same view, just uh, actually the same location, a little different view, and obviously in the winter, but it's kind of the same thing. And I really like the way this one turned out, so I'm hoping the summer one will turn out as well. Now the summer one I'm doing on a um, larger piece of paper. This one is a quarter sheet, whereas the other one was an eighth of a sheet. Um, some of the paintings I'll be doing for the demos might be an eighth of a sheet too, but this particular one I wanted it to be a, a quarter sheet. Um, so anyway, the next step on this painting is to do the, um, the water. So we're going to do the water, and I'm going to kind of make it a um, that light bluish purple color. So I'm taking what I already have in my tray here, and I'm going to use that as the color. We're not doing any more wet on wet. Once I do wet on wet in one spot in my painting, I don't do wet on wet anywhere else. It's only in this one spot. So I'm adding a little bit of Prussian blue to that to make it a better color. I don't know if you can see, but I'm going to try to make this all so you can see. Go right over the flagpole, go right over the tree, right over the sun reflection. It's all good. And try to stay. Now make sure, the really important thing about this is that you make sure that the whole sky is dry before you go ahead and do this. I waited 
until it dried. I did not blow dry it. I waited for the hour or however long it took for it to dry because it was really wet. So it's an hour after I did the first step. So that is the second step. Just get that water in there. And if you want to put a few little darker streaks of color in there, you can. Just to kind of add a little bit. But be careful because you don't want to get pile flowers. And we'll go back to this later. If you don't like your sky, which I don't, there's things about it I don't like. I'm not going to worry about it now. That will be at the end. I will probably do some more things to it before we um, start to put in the darks around it. So for now, that is the next step. So next is something to remember here. Black is ultramarine or indigo plus burnt umber. Um, and if you add those two colors together and it's too black or too brown and more blue, if it's too blue and more brown, and I will kind of show you how to do that because I know some of you have done it for a long time, but others kind of struggle with it still. So here goes burnt umber, brown. I'll bring in the, uh, I'll bring the palette a little bit closer. Burnt umber. Ultramarine. Um, it's brownish black. Turning a little blacker as I add more blue. Turning a little browner as I add more brown. Um, you can kind of warm it up. You can cool it down, whatever you want. And if it's not dark enough when you put it on, then just um, put another layer on when it dries. Because there's a lot of things in this painting that are black. The foreground, however, I don't like a lot of black in my foreground. So I don't think you're going to want to put it totally black in the foreground. And I'll show you how to do that. I'll probably do a mixture of brown and blue on the paper so that it'll have some texture to it. And then we can add a little green or we can add a little bit um, more brown, whatever we want to do. But I think I'm going to start with the flag here. So I'm taking this black. And it is a silhouette, so having it black is fine. But like I said, I don't like a large area in a foreground of black because it just leads your eye too far to the front of the painting and then you don't see what else is going on. So I will show you the basics of this one. You've got your flag drawn in by now. I drew my flag in. Just look at that shape right there. And that's what you'll have. I'm just going to outline it with your thin brush and bring it down to the color there. going to want to do the same thing with the flagpole and this um, this peninsula jutting out over here too. Although I'm going to add a little bit of green to the peninsula because I want it to I don't want it to totally have um, black. If you have too much black, it's just going to make it dark and not so pretty. And you want to put a little texture in there to make it look like trees coming up here and there. So I'm going to add a little more to it here and there. Just kind of swipe on some green, maybe some sap, maybe some olive. Sap and olive are good. Just add a little bit more bright. Now when that dries, that'll be more greenish, brownish, bluish. Um, and you can, what you can't see in this picture, the photograph, you won't even be able to see it either. But the very tip of this little peninsula sticking out is rock underneath the tree line. So right about here, and I'm going to put like a, a yellow ochre color there, just because I know it's like that. And you, you can just do trees if you want, but I want to make it a little bit um, more realistic, so that's about where it actually is. Um, so see how I'm kind of just doing some uneven little things to make it look like a tree line there. And the I'm going to wait till that dries, and then I'll put the yellow ochre in there, because that's going to really help it. Um, around the sun, my yellow kind of got lost when I took it away. So I think I'm going to put a little bit more yellow around that sun when I end up um, taking my mascot off. That's going to really be a nice bright white there. So that'll be really nice and yellow and pretty when I take it off. 
Well, now I'm going to go over it with a little bit of water just to lighten it a little bit because it's pretty light yellow in there. So a little water, and that should get it to that. Hi, so I realized that during my last portion of my next step, um, it was hard to hear me sometimes, so I'll try to repeat what I said before. And that is that I took um, some greens in through here. Um, I'll try to bring the camera a little closer. You'll see in my step-by-step -step photograph, too, how I did that. And then this is all black. Here, the flag and the trunk of the tree. That's all I've done so far. Um, I'm going to add some more tree line to it, but I want to make sure you can see me doing the tree so that you know how to do it as well. Um, so I will do that. Um, I put the tree, the the foliage part of the tree in there, and I'll have you watch me do that. I'm also going to do the foreground by adding some color that's not just black, but some lighter colors too, because I think that it really needs that in the foreground. Um, I said before, I don't like to have black in the foreground, so I will um, start to do that now. Um, I'm going to mix some black. Oh, oh, with some um, greenish and some bluish colors too so that you can just kind of add those colors onto the paper as opposed to having to mix them too much in your palette. So I'll bring my palette closer. I'll take some of the black, which now kind of turns gray when you add more water to it. I'll take some of the brown, add to it a little bit. And I'll start to put some of that color in there. And you can see me do that. I'm also going to take some green. Now notice how often I change color. Notice how often I dip my, color, my brush into the paint and in the water. Because I don't want this to be totally black. If um, you want to add darker colors later, yes, you can. Do it later. Wait till it dries. But at least put some color underneath for now. And make it kind of nice. You don't have to make it dark. Don't make it light. You know, there should be darkness to it because it is a silhouette. So, yeah, um, like that. Just kind of keep adding things over it. But don't get too caught up in painting too much because you don't want to create cauliflowers. You don't want to create um, strange things that the paint will do when you put one color on top of another, when it's starting to dry. So just um, kind of keep the, the dark colors going there in the foreground. I will darken it later because I do want it to have a silhouette look to it, but I figure if I've got these colors underneath, at least it will have a little bit of color to it when I go to add some more darks later. Um, it'll make it more interesting. You'll have a better feel for that it's the foreground as opposed to just a bunch of dark black. So see how quickly I did that? You don't want to spend any more time in there than I just did because otherwise, if I start going back to it now with color, I'm going to end up getting things I don't want in there. So I'm going to do that. Then I'm also going to add that yellow ochre that I talked about to the um, peninsula because that's now dry. So yellow ochre, remember, is your peanut butter color, which is right here. And I'm just going to add a little bit over here. And I'll add some more brown for some more depth later, but that's going to be like a rock area. So that should work. And then I will, when this dries, we'll end up putting in this little, um, in my photo here, you, oops, ah, let's see, photo. You can see the, the deck right there. Um, it's a, like a little dock. And we're going to put that in there. It's going to be easier than it looks. Don't get too worried about it. It's going to be a, like a mass of dark, a mass of dark color there, and then we'll put the people in. The people shapes will be kind of, kind of interesting too, and really easy to do, easier than you're thinking. And then once we've got all that in, then I'm going to start to mess around a little bit more with my sky, put some things in there that will help it to look a little better than it does now. There's parts of my sky that I don't really like too much, so um, that will do it for now, and I will. Wait till the foreground dries and start to put in some of the other foreground features. So I realized that this water needs a little bit of um, yellow too, because there's a little bit of yellow in here. You can see the orange reflection of the sky into that water a little bit. 
Então vamos lá, gente. Throw it around. That might even be too much. Just make sure you have a lot of water in it because it's like a fruit orange or something like that on your um thing. But um, you do need a little because it does have that orangey reflection on it, especially you know towards the shoreline there on the other side too. So yeah, just put a little bit in there. Bring it out a little from the sun. Just kind of swipe it out with some water towards the outer left and right of your painting, and that will help a good amount. I'm seeing a little more orange as I look at it more, right around that reflection. So even a tiny bit like that will help a lot. So I don't know if you can see very well, but I um, have drawn in that little dock right here. And I will send you a photograph of it, again, with um, an email that this video is linked to. The email should also include photos of the step-by-step -step still pictures that I've been taking. So what I'm going to do now is take my black and just go ahead and put in some um, color into there. I also, if you can notice, I've put... Um, just a little bit of um, grassiness area here. There's actually flowers, but because it's silhouetted, you really can't see them. So I will um, be working on this, and as I do, I will make more videos to show you what I'm doing. Um, it's going to be with a small brush right now. And the small brush will let me get some pretty fine lines in there. If you'll look, in the photograph, this is kind of just a mass of black right through here. There's not a lot of definition. So that's what we're going to end up putting through here with just our black. I'll start it, but I'm not going to finish it until I, man, while I'm working on it. And I'll show you what it looks like after. It looks kind of greenish, but I'm going to make it more black. And then these will be done with the side of a brush, the little railings, just like this. I will also draw some larger pictures of the people for you. So um, we'll go from there. And I will send photographs of these um, these step-by-step -step instructions as well. So as you can see, I got a little further. I did the deck. I just did kind of a mass of color through here. And then I did some little hash marks with the edge of my brush here. Nothing real detailed. The people, I will send you a photograph of what they look like. They're just simply shapes. Um, they don't, you know, they just represent people. They are not detailed people at all. They're just shapes, and I will show you how to do those. Um, this tree here, I did pencil draw it in, and I have a picture of that in my photographs. Um, so you'll be able to see that. And I think that um, I will take another picture of it now so that you can see what it looks like, um, and that way you'll have that picture. Um, it's just a simple outline of the, um, this, there's just an outline of what you see here. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in now, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, I think it's, you know, just, it's a pretty easy step. And if you just kind of watch what I'm doing, it should help. We want to start with black because we do want to make it a silhouette. Um, I'm going to start up here at the top of this um, line right here and just kind of follow the shape of the, you know, just taking the corner of the brush. See how I'm just doing the corner of the brush and kind of trying to get the angles on there, the branches, and how far out they come. Don't, don't forget that. Look how far on the photograph, look how some of them like go behind the flagpole. And you want to put that in there too so that it looks realistic. If your color is not solid on this first step, go ahead and put it in again. Down here I had to go over this twice. I also went over my foreground. You can still see a little bit of the green showing, but I did get darker there just to make it more, look more silhouetted so that it's not looks like daytime in the front and nighttime in the background. 
so I will um, be working on this tree a little bit and we'll shape it up with more details after we get the massive coloring in there. We'll go ahead and use a smaller brush and get some of the smaller details in there. But right now, look at how I'm doing this. Real gently, just touching the brush, kind of punching it, not even um, really painting, just bouncing the brush. So bounce the brush. That's that's my new term for the day. Bounce the brush. Um, and you'll get that that look. I'm just, you know, taking the corner of the brush, bouncing it up and down, back and forth to get that tree shape in there. Over here, there's some branches that go off the edge and that's what they look like right now. So as soon as that dries, that is still wet, I don't want to um, put the details in while it's still wet. I'm going to wait a little while. So I'll have it dry and then I'll come back and show you um, how to put the details in there and how to make it darker because in some of these spots it's a lot darker. You want to get that darkness in there. Right now it's still kind of a light black or gray. I want to get it to a darker black and we will do that shortly. So now back to the tree. Um, it's dry. I'm going to go back to it and um, take some black, some more black. And see in the photo, in the middle of the tree, it's a little darker, like towards the trunk. So notice the brush I'm using. It's not the big flat brush anymore. It's the little rounded brush. It just kind of gets into those smaller places better. So I'm just going to kind of, again, I'm kind of bouncing the brush towards the middle, especially kind of staying within the same areas that I already painted. Um, you can kind of come out. I'm just kind of darkening it up because it needs to get a little darker. And I think that, um, you know, kind of look for those masses in the photograph, those masses of color. Kind of put some, start to put some texture in there a little bit too to make it look kind of like some pine needles because it is a pine tree, as you can probably tell. But we'll use a smaller brush in a little bit to um, get to some little smaller <laughs> details too. So sorry about the barking dog. She's tired of this isolation too. Um, anyway, I have a smaller brush now. Switch to a smaller one to try to get the more of the details in. And some of these, you know, just just some little take the edge of the brush and just kind of go like this to get some texture in there to make it look like there's some pine. You don't have to do it everywhere but just in a few places to give it that pine look. We need to get that texture in there. You can also kind of just make some little dots here and there too, up in here without taking mass, doing masses of texture, just to make it look like it's more broken up and full of needles. Hopefully you can see that and um, get that more texture, which is a good thing to have in there. It will make your tree look a little better, a little bit more fuller, more fuller, more full, sorry. Um, and just keep on plugging away. I don't get it too detailed because once you get all those masses of dark in there, it's going to stand alone. It's going to look you know, it'll stand alone and look like a pine tree without making it super detailed. Now you can make a detail if you want to, if you're really into the detail, like I know some of you are, you can go with the pine tree. But I would stay away from getting, you know, putting every needle in there and every little spot you see. You can put some, here I put in a couple of little um, branches, just the straight, you can see these straight branches in here, here and there put a few of those in to make it look a little bit more realistic and that should be about the extent of your tree. You don't need to do too much more to it. If there's areas that are kind of light, you can go back and fill them in with even just, just some plain blue too, some plain um, ultramarine. That's okay too because that on top of the brown will just kind of give it some more dimension 
the more color you get in there, the better it is. Even if it's a silhouette, that looks a little bit nicer than just having it all black. Okay, so I've added some more darks through here, a little bit more texture, and on here as well to, cover, to add a second coat of black onto the dot. Um, I also put a light purple. So take your opera and your ultramarine, and I put a little bit over here just to add to the purpleness of here. Added a little bit more orange through here because of the fact that there's a lot of orange down here. I'm also going to add more to my sky, but I'm not going to do that quite yet because um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I, I like this, this purpley that's going on right here. I kind of like that. Um, I do not like this cauliflower here, so I'm probably going to do something with ultramarine blue, maybe mixed with a little bit of Prussian, maybe? Um, I'll try it and see what happens. So again, I'm going to take my big brush, and I'm going to take the ultramarine, a little bit of Prussian, just to green it down just a little bit. I don't want it too bright um, come through here. Now the, the main thing about this is you don't want hard edges. So what you have to do is um, take and kind of blend it into what you already have going on there. And so what you want to do is wet your brush with just water, dry it off on a paper towel, and just kind of blend it into the background there. See how that's just softening that hard edge? You don't want to have that hard edge to avoid it. And sometimes it's unavoidable because it dries too fast. Or sometimes even when you do this, you'll still see the brush strokes. But at least it's softening it a little bit. Um, like I said, I like that purple. I might put a few more streaks in the sky just here and there. Just a little bit here. Because that, that kind of makes this look a little lighter. And I like that um, contrast. Again, to soften that, to dry off your brush and just kind of scrub it into whatever you've got going on here. I don't want to cover up this purple. I want to just add to it. So there. Now, is it done? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm going to go over here and put a little bit of color here because this white edge is bothering me. Um, the next thing we do is take the maskoid off. Um, and just kind of play with it from there. I might take a Sharpie and add this line that goes down here and down here. It's the the um, the rope that takes the flag up and down, and there's no way to get that real thin with a brush, so I'm probably going to just um, use a Sharpie, so that way it won't be only a watercolor. It'll then turn into mixed media, but that's okay. I did take a close-up of the people, which I will send to you as a still photograph. Um, and of course, call or text me with questions. If something is not understood, I will try to do my best to answer your questions. Text me pictures along the way if you're having struggles or hard time and I can help you. Um, the next thing I'll do is take the maskoid off. That'll be in just a few minutes to make sure the sky around it is dry. Okay, thanks. Okay, so this is really gonna be a really cool transition in this painting is when you take the maskoid off. I'm using tape because I'd rather use that than just rub it with my fingers. Um, you can also use a rubber cement pickup. Do not use an eraser. Do not use a kneaded eraser. That's not, that won't work. So a piece of tape should work. Pretty stubborn sometimes. Here it comes. There, there you go. And it took off part of the flagpole because I had painted the flagpole over it. So I'm just gonna go back and put that right back in. If that happens to you, it's not a big deal. Here to the reflection. Watch this. How cool does that make it look? Oh my gosh. Wow. What a difference that makes, huh? It's Make sure you clean it up and get all that mask right off. And then this little moon up here too. Oh, nice. I probably will put a little bit of light blue in there because it's not quite that um, prominent on the photograph. So Obviously, the sun would not be in front of the flagpole, so I want it to be there as well as this. Just a little bit of that in there, and then I'm going to take a little tiny bit of light blue, um, just a smidgen of it, 
put it right in there until it's not so clumpy. But you don't want it to show up. You don't want to put too much glue in there. And I think we're about done. I might do some touch-ups. If I do, I will make sure that I send you photographs. It's been really fun doing this for you, and I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you have been able to follow okay. I think that um, everything you know worked out with the painting. There's some things that I would do differently, but right now I think it will work. I'm going to take the um, tape off and show you what it looks like close up, because I think you would like to see that as well. So I don't know how it is being taped to a card table, but first time for everything. So taking the tape off helps too. And there you have it. Hopefully you all got a good result from it. If not, try it again or call me with questions. Text me with questions. Don't call, just text. Or email me with questions. Email me or text me with anything you want to do differently. Um, I also will probably put a few orange streaks through this reflection here but again I'll take a picture of it when I'm done with that but everything else I think is done it's been great we'll be talking with you and in touch with the next painting